Today on the table, I have the Rock Island Model 200 and the Colt Official Police. Both are six-shot revolvers. The price split's weird because this is an older firearm and, you know, you gotta value it first. The problem I have with valuing is a lot of people like to go off these valuing books. Now, I look through here, I can't find an actual, like, disclaimer that this book is sponsored by certain firearm manufacturers, but it seems like Browning, Winchester, and Colt firearms are valued unrealistically high. This book claims that because this is never fired, and what it is, it's worth $1,700. I went on Gunbroker to see what people are actually paying for them, and it's about 500 bucks. Yeah, there's about 300 listings listing them for like 800, 1000, 900 dollars, but actual like sold auctions what people are actually paying for them tops off at about $500. Once they get over that, nobody bids on them anymore unless it's nickel. Then it goes as high as $600. So that is something to be considered. Now the Rock Island Model 200 these are very affordable, and I mean that. Now, the receivers are basically identical to Colt. There is a slight difference in the hump, and then there's extra pins on the Colt that you don't see on the Rock Island. These particular two firearms do have a different barrel length, so the Colt is going to be heavier. I do believe, though, that even if they had the same size barrel length, the Colt would still be heavier, so that is something you want to be considered with. The Rock Island, you get these really crappy grips. They got a split in the back right there. Not nice at all. The Colt, you do get some nice wood grips. The finish on the Colt is far superior as well, too. I mean, obviously, you'd have to buy these used, so it all depends. This particular one was never fired, so the finish is completely flawless. The Rock Island, it's like a park finish. Eh, it looks okay. I mean, it's great for just shooting. Trigger Brake, the Model 200. Single action mode. Brakes all right. Not too shabby for a single action. Double action mode. Let me try that again. Brakes okay, but it's not predictable. It's very hard to tell when the trigger is actually going to break. I get like a jump in it. Normally with a double action, what I'd like to do is, you know, go right to the wall. And then slowly let it snap. But this one's hard to do that. The Colt. Single action mode. Definitely superior to the Rock Island. A lot lighter. It's more like a glass rod breaking. Double action mode. And not too much better than the Rock Island. Maybe there's a slight difference because there's a click as you're coming back, so it kind of gives you a pre-warning of when it may break, but it's still very hard to find the wall. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty equal on double action mode. The Rock Island does have better sights. They are more defined. The Colt, I do like the hammer a lot better. Now, this is a pinned hammer, so what that means is the pin actually goes into there. So let's say you have it rested forward. Well, actually, the Colt's different because it pushes the hammer back. The idea is, is the transfer bar system of the Rock Island is supposed to be more safe. But I do believe because of how the mechanics work of the Colt, this is also a safe firearm. If there was some sort of mal mechanical malfunction, I could see maybe it going forward. But for the most part, you're good to go on that. Opening the cylinders, they both use the same exact latch. Colt is butter smooth. The Rock Island, they did add a little bit of texture on there. Helps you grip it a little bit better. Good to go. So which one would I purchase? I mean, the Rock Island's like half the price of the Colt. That's realistic pricing. I mean, if you went by this book and went $1,700, what it's actually valued for, it's like, what, a tenth of the price of the Colt? But saying I could get them both realistic priced, what would I pick? If I was collecting Colt firearms, which I never would, which I'll explain in a second, then obviously, yes, the Colt. 
for just shooting because of how affordable the Rock Island is, I think this is a great firearm. You're good to go. Now the reason I wouldn't go with Colt is the same reason I avoid most major manufacturers. Colt, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, I mean the list goes on and on and on. But Colt doesn't care about the private market at all. They even totally pulled their firearms off the private market before. They cut off bayonet lugs and stuff even before it was required to do so. So because Colt doesn't give a sh about the private market, I don't give a sh about them. Now it is a little bit different when you're talking about an older pistol. This wouldn't particularly be the one I'd want. I'd want a snub nose and I'd want it nickel. But because books like this exist, which have no realistic... <laughs> I mean, yes, for the most part, these books do work. But you have to vet it with actual sold auctions. What are people actually paying? Because it doesn't matter. This book could say it's worth a million dollars, but nobody's going to buy it for that. And an item is only worth what people are going to pay for it. For example, this 3040 Craig, this is going to sit in the shop forever because this firearm's on consignment, the guy got the price out of the book, and it's stupid high. It's never going to sell for what the book says. Actual, like, sold rifles, what they're actually going for, somewhere around seven, eight hundred bucks. But whatever, we'll just leave it sit until he decides to either lower the price to something realistic, or he comes and grabs the firearm. So that would be it. Honestly, unless the Colt was that particular model I was talking about and I was collecting Colts, Colts which I wouldn't, I would go to Rock Island. But anyways, thanks for watching. Leave in the comments below which one you would pick and why.